let's see, Mike, I think is working. If it's not, just shout out at me. Okay, cool. Uh, well, welcome to Consensus, I guess. Now, welcome to this talk in Consensus. And I see some of our team, our awesome Horizon Zen team out there, and community members. I'm not going to name names. I don't want to dox anyone. Uh, but guys, thank you for joining. This talk will be a little bit about where I see the future going. We're going to talk a little bit of cryptography, and ultimately, we're going to talk about where I think some products need to go in this industry and what we're doing at Horizon about it, right? Um, clicker, really important, right? Okay, so the title of the talk, From Cypherpunk to Solving Blockchain Scalability with Snarks. Like, I came into this industry uh, as, I would call it a cypherpunk sympathizer. I wasn't quite old enough to be like a, a real legit cypherpunk. Those guys are pretty OG. Uh, I wish I was, but I was definitely a sympathizer. And what that was all about was using cryptography, technology, really cryptography, to, for social implications, like connecting people, opening the world up, giving people privacy, also potentially a voice around the world, right? So Bitcoin, this industry, really was founded in this kind of philosophical domain of cypherpunks. Now, Look at consensus, look around you guys. This stuff, every consensus that we have every year just gets bigger and bigger and seems to be getting more and more corporate. Not always a bad thing, right? I mean, corporate could be a bad word, um, but what it means is we're inching, maybe racing, jumping closer and closer to mainstream. Now, is that good or bad? I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but the technology has a lot of uses that go beyond the early days of Bitcoin and cyberpunks and then you know the privacy crowd uh, that really I come from and a lot of our team at Horizon come from. And now we're thinking really, how do we pro proliferate this technology? And kind of, I wish I could say like through deep foresight to deep understanding and amazing strategic uh, thinking. Uh, no, really through dumb luck, we happen to work in this zero knowledge cryptography space that I think is that key to make this technology actually get out there. In hindsight, we can pretend to be geniuses and really smart and deep foresight to get to where we are. Uh, we were a little lucky to be building in this privacy space that actually happens to have a lot of implications and applications to crypto, blockchain, Web3, going mainstream. So that's what I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to talk about the type of cryptography that we're using to actually get this stuff out there in our products. Uh, we call it a trilemma, really, scalability, decentralization, and security. Now, for those who read the crypto news, if you guys are out there, kind of on pick your favorite crypto news site, it seems like every week, not every day, thankfully, knock on wood, uh, there's some sort of a hack or breach or something going on that really takes a lot of money from a lot of different people. Uh, so we, we have real security issues in the industry. Security is a very wide open topic to talk about. A lot of it comes down to user experience and actually uh, making sure you're doing the right thing with the products you're using. Um, but there are deep technical implications to security uh, and scalability, and, and really that comes down to decentralization. Now, again, from the cypherpunk world that I wish I really came from, but I sympathize with, uh, decentralization was the name of the game. Decentralization is the name of the game for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, for the big popular blockchain systems that are out there, and for Horizon, absolutely. Decentralization is the name of our game, and really where we're marching, racing, uh, whatever you want to say on our product, the technology side, to get out there. But it is a trilemma. And by trilemma, I mean that these things are not always moving in the same direction. Sometimes if you pull more in one direction, say you pull more towards, I know, scalability, you're compromising something. Or you can often compromise something. That something could be security, that something could be decentralization. Oftentimes those things are coupled, right? So for, uh, for the technologists out there, they want this technology to get out there into a much wider audience with very useful products out there. For those of us that would rather use a decentralized Web3 version of Uber than Uber, right? this trilemma really matters. All right, so this is the trilemma that we're tackling. Uh, I am the co-founder and uh, uh, co-founder of Horizon, the public blockchain, and co-founder CEO of Horizon Labs, a technology arm for the Horizon ecosystem. Uh, we are and I'll talk about it really at the heart of this Web3 thing that's going on right now and really big on the technology side. My background is the least interesting thing about this, this uh, conversation today that we'll have. Um, but I come from so, uh, like a, a deep science background, but then also got my uh, PhD in social science, economics, finance. Now, one cool thing about this before I move on is I got to do my dissertation for my PhD in crypto finance. 
That was kind of cool. The fact that my department at the time was crazy enough to let me study Bitcoin asset pricing was novel in 2014 when this stuff was going on. That was fun and they let me actually finish that up and, and roll that into a teaching gig, teaching uh, blockchain, Bitcoin and blockchain uh, course at the University of South Carolina. That was a cool part of my background. Um, but the background of the project that I'm talking about today, uh, we started off as a funny little project called Zencash. Uh, I say funny little project because we were, you could say maybe uh, straddling that cypherpunk crowd where we were all about you know, privacy technology and w where we got to market, big thank you to Zcash. Zcash pioneered the first application of zero knowledge proofs into cryptocurrency. Uh, this was a huge deal for us. I mean, like existential, this is how we came about was forking from this stack where they actually wrote a, a zero knowledge circuit for privacy on coin transfers. All right, so this was the first application of you know, deep privacy technology using zero knowledge proofs into the cryptocurrency domain. We took that, we ran with it at Zencash back in 2017, May 2017, when we launched our, our project with a really cool uh, community. I have to say, our community that stuck with us for the last five years, we're kind of OG in crypto, you know, five years around at this point is a little OG. So it's a fun thing that you have this OG project that started off as Zencash or cryptocurrency that now, just now, literally now, <laughs> we're, we're pivoting into a zero knowledge enabled blockchain of blockchain. So basically a platform that leverages the best of zero knowledge technology for scalability. You can probably guess guys, we're solving that trilemma. That's what we're doing here. We're solving that trilemma of scalability, security and decentralization with zero knowledge proofs so that we can actually deliver all of those cool things that are in Web3 today, but then trying to go even, even further and deliver great, amazing products that people actually use every day Besides us degen traders, you know, us DeFi guys out there who are just kind of degen on our phones trading all day or on, you know, swapping on, the, you know, you pick your favorite, uh, you know, swap uh, pool you want to be part of and balance are on top of that. Uh, besides those guys, we want you to have great products on your phone and on your computer in your life that just happen to be running on this infrastructure because this infrastructure is what we think has real value in this. In it's like I'm talking into this like it's a mic. It's not a mic. I'm, why am I doing that? Uh, but we want this technology, the rails of what we're building here to actually proliferate and be used for, with most of, or many of the things that you use. You know, that, that uh, decentralized Uber that I talked about, we want that to be running a blockchain because we want it to be decentralized. We want it to be permissionless. We want it to be, you know, owned by the individuals who use it, right? These are those characteristics of Web3 that I love that we should be really pushing for as, you know, technologists, as enthusiasts, as community members here. Uh, that's what Horizon's all about. We're doing it with applications of the zero knowledge cryptography. Now I'll use this. Let's see. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll point over there. <laughs> all right, so the trilemma. This is that famous trilemma I was talking about. Um, this is making this technology scale. There, like I said when I, I introed this conversation, there are trade-offs always on these three. You know, this is a three-dimensional space and there are trade-offs in this space. Sometimes when you push or pull really hard in one direction or another, you're trading off in other important directions. Now, one direction that kind of annoys a lot of us uh, purists out there in this industry uh, that has been made, and I would say legitimately made, was when you make that trade off on decentralization. Scalability was the name of the game a few years ago. All right, maybe if, if we go back to the Bitcoin block size debates, remember how toxic those were, guys? Um, but if we go beyond that, over the last few years, there have been some really cool amazing projects that have hit the market that scaled fantastically for different use cases. Whether we're talking L2s uh, on Ethereum or other protocols, or whether we're talking about DAGs, you know, like directed acyclic graphs, whether we're talking about whatever your favorite uh, sidechain technology is, hopefully after this talk it's Horizon, right? But uh, all of these scaling solutions came with trade-offs and often what was so annoying was the trade-off that was most often made was on decentralization. Rightfully so, and I would say with eyes wide open, guys, because like sometimes it, it's good to be a purist and other times you get blinded because you're a purist. And I'll say I was blinded by some of the uh, evolutions of our own industry here because I was on the purist side and I was thinking we have to really stick to these core principles, decentralization and so forth. And by the way, I think a lot of these projects will. It's just they decided to launch and go to market first by trading off. And, and, by this trade-off, you're probably thinking, who's this crazy guy on stage ranting about decentralization and security? 
Uh, the trade-off was simple. The trade-off was we need to scale, therefore decentralization comes at a cost, and the cost is you're replicating every single state transition on a public ledger for every single node. That gets quite cumbersome when you deal with smart contracts that have a lot of computation, a lot of operations happening. So what they did was they said, let's, let's make this a little bit less decentralized and we'll have certifiers. They can process transactions fast. And there are different chains out there that have different functions and specializations, many of them really hot, and they're doing great things in the product, the product domain. But the trade-off was they traded decentralization for some centralization so they can go fast, they could go to market sooner, and they could tackle actual like, product and exchanges and different things that they really wanted to focus on. Now, that's fine, but where we're going with Horizon is we're trying to solve this trilemma, and I think we're doing a pretty good job that I hope to convince you of. We're trying to scale massively uh, with high security, best-in-class security that, you know, is with the tools that are out there, and stay completely decentralized. That's our goal, and I hope to you know, show you some of that architecture. But the key of it, this funny you know, acronym over here, I think it's called an acronym of uh, Succinct Non-Interactive Arguments of Knowledge, SNARKs. It's a construct, a data construct for a zero knowledge proof. And a zero knowledge proof, I think, is at the core. You're gonna hear this term much more often. You're already hearing it so much more now. We're some of the hottest projects in this, in this industry, some of the hottest startups, and some of the highest valued companies are companies that specialize in this stuff, either from the research side, and they're really pushing the frontier of the state of the art of what can we do with zero knowledge proofs, or on the application side, guys who are writing circuits for particular functions, right? Now, an example motivates what a snark is or what a zero knowledge proof is, because it does get a little complicated on the cryptography side, but you can think of it as something real simple, where it's a data construct that allows you to broadcast information to the public domain, to a public ledger, which is a blockchain, guys, right? Encrypted, and not just encrypted, because anyone can encrypt information these days, but this construct of encryption is such that you can actually make use of the data that was broadcast without seeing or revealing that data. Now, this is a really big deal. And kudos to Zcash, guys, like I said at the beginning, to actually bring this to market for the first time in the cryptocurrency domain. And what they brought to market was the idea that I, Rob, can send uh, you know, Zen to maybe Dean. I see Dean out there. He's on the horizon side. I can send Zen to Dean. And the, the, I'll broadcast the transaction. The, the transaction will be completely encrypted. It'll hit the, the public, you know, it'll be relayed to every node in the blockchain, hit that, that ledger, the mempools on every node, and everyone will see, wow, consensus checks have been met. So a valid transaction happened, but they don't know that it's Rob, they don't know that it's Dean, and they have no idea what was sent. It could be Zen, you know, it could be a message that was encrypted and sent, no idea. All the world can verify, and importantly, it's the world verifying in the public domain, something valid happened, right? Now, this is an example that takes it a little bit further where for the privacy minded of us, if you want to have maybe like a DeFi, a decentralized finance app, and in that app, maybe as the industry matures a little bit more, we have things like zero knowledge IDs and you know, ways of verifying that you are a real human being, a unique human being, and we want to verify something. Maybe you're doing, I don't know, you want to make an investment and you know, the, we have these like funny laws or rules in the US, um, don't quote me lawyers out there, talk to Dean. Uh, accredited investor rules. You want to make an investment, it's your money, you want to invest in something. Well, the government says you're not qualified to make that investment unless you have this net worth or unless you make this amount of money every year. Well, you want to be able to do this in a decentralized way, right? Because we want to use a DeFi app. Well, how do we check this kind of thing? A zero knowledge proof is perfect because I can prove to the world in the zero knowledge concept that I have, let's say in this case, $150,000 balance on some wallets. We'll call it a wallet, not a bank balance, right? Let's not do that. Let's call it a wallet, a Web3 wallet. You have a particular balance that exceeds some threshold and therefore you're qualified to do X. In this case, make an investment, right? This is an example of you can do something, perform some operation like a balance check without actually revealing my identity, without revealing my wallet's identity. Because maybe as soon as my wallet, uh, my public key, my you know, encoded public key, my wallet address is revealed to the public, you can do a chain analysis on every transaction that I've ever done in my history, right? And that could be a gross violation of your privacy. Maybe you don't want the world, maybe a criminal, to know exactly every single transaction they do because maybe you go to, I don't know, Starbucks or your favorite cafe every morning and you order a juice and you pay for it in cryptocurrency 
you don't want the world to know exactly what uh, location you visit at exactly what time of day every day that you're going, right? That's a gross violation of your privacy. You can invent an infinite number of other ones out there. Zero knowledge proofs are a cryptographic construct that allow us to use public ledgers and make use of the information under the hood, right? This is huge, guys, and it goes beyond coin transfer. Now, it comes to scalability. It comes back to the trilemma here, and Horizon is, is really solving this in a big way. And I'm gonna show you an architecture diagram besides these really important words. We use zero knowledge proofs for data privacy, really important when we talk about broadcasting information to public ledgers, especially if what we're doing here goes beyond just this large, very large room and venue, if it actually goes out there into the real world. And most of those things that you do, or many of those things that you do every day, are on applications or tools that are broadcasting information, your information, to the world. You wanna preserve privacy in that data. We use zero knowledge proofs for that. We use zero knowledge proofs for scaling horizontally by connecting blockchains. That's another interesting talk when I get to my architecture slide. And we use zero knowledge proofs for recursion, which is a fun computer science term that really just talks about keeping the database size of what you're working with succinct, right? Because we want scalability. Scalability means many things to many people, guys. But part of scalability is can you actually run a full node of this system? Can you run a full instance of that software on any device that you might happen to have? And yeah, maybe we're a little spoiled being here in you know, the first world, but not everyone in the world has 20 you know, gigabytes of capacity to be able to run a node and verify every transaction on a ledger. So the technology that we're building makes it much more easy, much easier to verify all of the transactions and actually participate and really participate. Not just participate through relays or block explorers, but participate by owning the node, owning your own node, participating by joining the network permissionlessly, right? So this is that general area that's really important for where we're going with our technology. Here's the big architecture diagram that I keep alluding to. This is us in a nutshell. What Horizon has done, besides launch as an OG cryptocurrency project in 2017, and the real OGs out there, don't mock me for the 2017 being OG. I, I know Bitcoin is around longer. Uh, but we've gone from those five years launching as a cryptocurrency, Zen, the cryptocurrency. We've built out a big, massively scalable interoperability protocol that scales amazingly, massively, horizontally. In this horizontal scaling term, I just made it up, I don't know if it's a real term, but what it is is we're networking blockchains. So you can have a lot of blockchains operating in parallel, so you can operate a lot of different functions, computation, applications, on their own infrastructure. All right, so we think about this as like a big infrastructure play for tomorrow. This scales beautifully using zero knowledge proofs at the core. So what we have, if we actually look at the architecture, we have Horizon, the public blockchain. This is a Bitcoin-like, Zcash-like, you know, core proof of work blockchain, it's OG, right? And we modified it in a few really important ways. We modified it for security. We put something, so for the, the technologists out there, we, we did something about 51% attacks because being around a while, we actually were 51% attack guys. It sucks, it's not pleasant. It was a small one, but it got us thinking, let's not just sit around like chumps and wait for the next one. Let's actually write some software that actually makes it much more like exponentially more difficult or costly to attack the network, so we hardened the network. We did a delayed block penalty. You can check out the technical paper on it if you want more details. And then we integrated a few hundred thousand lines of code beyond that. It was all about the zero knowledge based interoperability protocol we call Zendu. Now this is one where it allows you to declare a, a snark verifier when you launch your side chain, your blockchain, declare that verifier on the main chain. And all the world has to do with every single block that gets mined on our network is verify the proof that gets sent from the side chain that you created. It doesn't have to know anything about the operations, the application logic, it doesn't care what happens in that side chain. And you could have a lot of side chains, thousands of side chains operating in Horizon and just verifies it. it you have a, an, an accumulation or an aggregation of snark proofs that happen on the side chains. They get aggregated into a snark certificate, sent back to the main chain and the miners verify what happened there on the main chain. That's all that it takes. It scales massively because whenever you, you launch your own blockchain, whether be, if you want to launch like another AMM that happens to be like a really like, like say like an ASIC equivalent of an AMM. And by that I mean really juiced up, turbocharge your AMM. It has its own blockchain. You tailor the parameters of that chain to make it really fast, really performant for your single function. You can have that as your own blockchain infrastructure. And the main chain, the rest of the world, 
can verify every operation that happens on that chain with a succinct proof and a certificate of an aggregation of proofs that gets sent back to the main chain. Now, this all operates because the crypto, crypto economics of these systems and why cryptocurrency is really useful, important, critical. So let's not bash this highly volatile thing called cryptocurrency. It's critical because you need real-time automated payments that flow across the network constantly, persistently. They reward all of the decentralized actors to do their jobs. That's the point of the cryptocurrency. That's Zen in our model. Now, Zen for the last five years has been nothing but a cryptocurrency. It's a widely, widely distributed cryptocurrency. You know, like we're on Coinbase, Binance, pick your favorite exchange. Not all of them, guys. If you're on an exchange, list Zen, please, now. Um, we're out there, though. We have institutional support. We have a Grayscale product, HZen. So you can go to your brokerage account and buy Zen. We're out there. We have the infrastructure. We're everywhere, right? But now Zen is being flipped from a cryptocurrency that does nothing but transactions and is now going to be a utility coin. It is an a utility coin that does things like run an Ethereum virtual machine integrated as a side chain. They can do things like algorithmic stable coins with a bucket in Zen. They can do things like, I don't know, fuel the entire crypto economy that's on here. But that's a cri the cryptocurrency. Connected here with the cross-chain transfer protocol, which is our version of, so for the crypto guys out there, there are other side chain projects in the market that you're well aware of. There's Polkadot, there's Cosmos, right? There are others that are experimenting with side chain technology. Ours is completely permissionless, uses snarks. You don't have to ask us, tell me what your project is and can, can you get my permission to launch your chain? No, I don't want to give you my permission because I, I don't believe in that kind of thing in crypto. That is not crypto native. And I don't believe in having a restricted number of slots that go exponentially higher in cost if you want to build in the system. What I believe in is a completely decentralized permissionless system that anyone in the world can participate in at very low cost. All right, so that's what we built here. So what Zendu is, now we're, we delivered this very large interoperability protocol into production, by production I mean mainnet, last December. You still haven't heard of us probably because we haven't done much with it yet. Although that's changing in two weeks now. We're launching a minting platform. It's a no-code minting platform. You can do fungible and soon non-fungible tokens in Horizon for the first time. That's cool. It's the first critical element of Web3. Now, Horizon Labs does a lot of Web3 work out there. And, and all of that stuff that we've been doing, cultivating and learning in that Web3 environment, we're now bringing to Horizon, right? And you can look at the stuff that Horizon Labs has done recently. Some really big, like the hottest token launch of last year we did with ApeCoin. We did the most you know, interesting, largest, largest NFT launch recently with the other side with the Ape ecosystem as a technology partner. We're bringing all that know-how into Horizon. All right, so we took a long time to build out this platform. Now it's finally going to market. We're finally getting the first real application with a token minting platform in two weeks. It's hitting testnet. Sorry, uh, engineers, I'm not gonna actually look at you so you don't get mad at me, but on that side of the room, maybe it didn't want me to, to say the actual date, but it's going live, a couple weeks. After that, fast follow, we're integrating an Ethereum virtual machine in there because we've realized in five years in crypto being alive, certain standards have evolved on the market. How much time do I have? Cool, we're good. Uh, Ethereum is the standard in the industry for smart contracting. Uh, well, the Ethereum standard, Solidity, and everything that happens in there, all the tools, the know-how, the devs, all the Web3 apps, the smart contracts that have been deployed today, that is a massive ecosystem, a massive environment, and we've realized we need that in Horizon, right? So we're going to integrate in an Ethereum virtual machine soon. Now it's always tough to talk about dates here, but we should be dev complete on version one, so milestone one, uh, I'm, I'm hearing by end of July. From there, it'll be on mainnet this year. That, that's our commitment. Now we'll have Ethereum compatibility in Horizon, and then from there we're going further. Our vision, our goal, is to make everything fully provable, and that's why we're investing so heavily in zero knowledge proofs and on the cryptographic side because we want to have a fully provable virtual machine, fully provable blockchains, fully provable smart contracting, so that the world can participate in a completely decentralized and secure and permissionless way. That's why we're doing it, right? All right, this is V1 of the, the platform that we're bringing to market. One, they can have massive scalability on the horizontal side. Then you could talk L2s on any of these chains for now horizontal and vertical scaling. But we're launching a V1 product that's a proof of stake side chain in this network, an SDK that helps you launch your own proof of stake chain that has 1,000 TPS, 1,000 transactions per second. We can launch about 10,000 of them, capacity on our main chain. So when you send a certificate from a side chain to the main chain, 
the capacity that we have in that field for the certificates allows up to 10,000 chains built this way. Now that's gonna change, and it's gonna get even better over time. So this is what I mean by massive scalability. If you just do the math, the numbers here are pretty staggering. Now, you can say we have zero chains today operating. Okay, I get it. Two weeks we'll have one chain operating, then we'll have two chains, then it'll be an explosion, right? This is how these things work. And this is, you, you deliver tools to the marketplace, you conform to the standards of the day, and then you drive the ecosystem grow. We laid the foundations and we spent years building this out. The capacity is phenomenal. But what are the use cases? So I named a couple of them, right? A minting platform. Okay, you can't be a crypto economy without the ability to mint. Mint fungible tokens, mint non-fungible tokens. All right, this is the heart of Web3 today. Uh, you can't be a Web3, a proper Web3 product or project without smart contracts. But we wanted to talk about one other product that we've built. Uh, we built it with the Celsius network. We did a POC. But why I love this product is because it's something you could only do on Horizon today. Smart contracting, Ethereum virtual machine. Well, there's Ethereum. There's plenty of other EVM chains out there, guys. But what we've built allows a lot more than just what's out there today. This is one example. It's a small example. I think it could be a huge example if we actually put some proper resources to developing this and getting it out there as a product. Uh, so we'll talk to our product team about that. We POC'd it with Celsius. Celsius is a hot uh, CFI app, centralized finance app, where you deposit your crypto, your digital assets with them, and they allow you know, lending, borrowing, and earning yields on your assets. One of the big questions for users of the app is what are they doing with your digital assets? What are they doing with the reserves? Are they gambling your reserves? Are they lose, have they lost your reserves that you've deposited with them, right? We trust them, they're a partner of ours, but hey, trust but verify, right? If you use the app, if you're in this world of CFI to DeFi or crypto, you should trust but verify. Maybe just verify, it's better than trust. Get rid of trust, trust the code because it's open source and you can look at that and test and verify it, but verify. So what we've built with the Celsius network is a completely decentralized cryptographic real-time auditing tool. We call it ZK Audit. What we've done, our cryptographers did a cool thing. What they did was they snarkified the Bitcoin blockchain. So they replayed the Bitcoin blockchain. We replay every transaction on Bitcoin. We swap out the curves for snark-friendly curves. And then we built an application that verifies reserves on that. This is a cool thing. So there are a lot of implications here, guys. Now I can say this is uh, patent pending. I think our lawyer told us to, to say that. Patent uh, provisional filed, right? Um, there's a lot of other implications, follow infrastructure stuff that could be really hot products themselves that fall from this. Think about what I just said. We have snarkified Bitcoin, right? That itself, snarkified Bitcoin and run it as a Horizon sidechain. On testnet today, but hey, we'll, we'll evolve that to mainnet. Uh, we'll then move to the other assets that are in their portfolio. We'll snarkify Ethereum, we'll snarkify all the other hot chains that have TL, uh, <laughs> value lock, TVL. Uh, and then we'll replay them. And then this application, one of many, will actually be able to do real-time audits of reserves in a privacy-preserving way. So Celsius, the institutions that invest in them, the users that use the application, your data is not being revealed to the world. We're not showing the world your data, but we're doing real-time aggregated cryptographic proofs of all of those digital asset reserves. Now, again, there are many implications here. We're talking about snarkifying the infrastructure that is crypto today. Starting with Bitcoin, then we'll go to Ethereum, and then we'll go down that TBL list of all the other important stuff out there. This is one application that runs on the Horizon network, on testnet, again. But one application that runs on the Horizon network that goes beyond just having like a smart contracting platform, it goes beyond just a token minting platform. This is one thing that's unique to us. We do it with zero knowledge. I mean, the application itself uses zero knowledge proofs and circuits, but this is a blockchain, like a blockchain itself running in the Horizon network with SNARKs that do the interoper interoperability. Now, token mint. So Horizon, Horizon, we've been around for a while, OG cryptocurrency project, right? It's about time that we have tokenization in Horizon. It's really about time. I used to be kind of cussing up a storm with our, our technology, you know, te technology guys, like guys, why can't we do uh, tokens in Horizon? We've been around for a while. We took the hard path. There's no doubt about it. We took a hard, hard path where we wanted to invent an interoperability protocol yet yeah, that was massively scalable and privacy preserving. And then we launched a blockchain that can do tokenization. That's what Token Mint is. It goes live in two weeks. But I encourage you guys to come by our booth, meet our really cool team, and mint a token with them after this. It's a no-code minting platform. It's really simple. You, you connect your Web3 wallet to the application, 
and you can mint your token. We say 15 minutes or less, 14 of those minutes are really writing down your seed phrase, right? That's always tough with your, uh, your Web3 wallet, but it's important, guys. And don't take a screenshot, don't copy paste your seed phrase, actually write it down, put it somewhere safe, secure, right? And redundant, safe and secure. Uh, so token mint's going live. The market here, besides uh, our Horizon ecosystem, is you could finally mint fungible tokens in a couple of weeks, and the non-fungible tokens are done on the back end. We'll roll that out with a, a quick follow feature release. But it was for people that we want to make it super simple, guys, like really super simple. We don't want you to be a developer. I'm talking like a walkie-talkie here. You know, that's uh, maybe uh, something I'm too used to with my daughter. She loves walkie-talkies. Um, but we want to make this really simple for people to mint tokens. Now, what's a little bit unique here, and I'm going to show you a, a demo video, is we're going beyond just simple token launch, uh, token minting. That's the product that's going live in two weeks, is simple token minting. Then we'll have the NFTs uh, fast follow. But the cool thing is, what about zero knowledge? What about privacy preservation in tokenization? So we've worked with a lot of very famous NFT brands that have issued tokens. And you know, there's always a lot of FUD out there. Like We know these guys. We know that they're serious, uh, trustworthy guys, right? But again, trust but verify. Uh, their communities, sometimes there's FUD in them. And their communities wonder, you just did a massive multi-billion dollar token launch. Well, who owns the tokens? Were VCs gobbling up all the tokens? Were the founders uh, giving themselves a bigger allocation than they're declaring publicly, right? Well, what if we had a zero knowledge, privacy preserving application that could do all this stuff on chain and show the world that what you did actually conforms to what you said you were going to do? So guys, can we please start the demo video? We'll see how this, uh, technology transition goes. Tokens are a powerful tool. While the advent of blockchain technology is empowering builders around the world to launch tokens, today's tokenization platforms lack the capability to ensure transparency and provable tokenomics in the initial token distribution process. Transparency in the initial token allocation is important. This can be achieved by providing public access to the information of the initial token distribution, such as how much of the token is allocated and to whom. This also includes the amount unlocked. But how do you reveal all that information without compromising user privacy? With Horizon ZK Snark enabled token mint platform, Transparency and privacy will no longer be a dilemma. Token Mint is a no-code tokenization platform that allows anyone to easily and quickly launch a token with custom tokenomics. The Token Mint platform comes with a token generator for creating and minting tokens, the Cobalt wallet for managing and storing tokens, and a block explorer. These tools are built on the Token Mint chain, which is a side chain that runs on the Horizon network. To truly harness the power of tokenization, we're introducing ZK Snarks to Token Mint to enable provable tokenomics while preserving user privacy. With your wallet connected on the Token Mint, simply click Create Token. Fill out some basic information about your new token, like name, ticker symbol, total supply. You can choose to do a fixed amount or unlimited supply of tokens. Then you can provide more information about your token project by providing information like a website, description, and social media accounts so people can learn more and join your community. Next is the minting stage where you will set up your token allocation structure. You will set how many tokens each beneficiary will receive and select if there is a lockup period. After you complete all the information of your initial token allocation, you can start the minting process. Once the minting process is completed, the ZK Snark verified token allocation information will be publicly available on your token information page. It will show the recipients of the token allocations and the correct amount received. It's that easy. What do you guys think? You guys want to mint a token or what? <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's move on here. What's next? 
All right. Can you guys hear me? Is it back on? Cool. All right. So guys, you see, this is an example of a little example of the future. And the future is verifiability, provability, decentralization. Anyone should be able to participate in this world that we're building. And what they're doing when they make a claim, that claim, when made publicly, should be verifiable. This is one example of a tool integrated into the next version of what we're releasing in two weeks, right? The next version, right? Uh, doing privacy with tokenization. We think this is a really big deal. It's something that we learned on the product side, actually working with some of the hottest pro projects out there that is hardworking as they are, as diligent as they can be on the legal or regulatory side when they do a launch, there are always people in the communities that will question what you're doing, and communities are at the heart of what we're doing as, as an ecosystem. If you don't focus, in, focus on your community, you don't foster you know, a healthy community and transparency and showing exactly what you're doing is key to that, uh, you can have problems. Now, we, or spent years getting to where we are right now. I know it may seem like a, a little bit of a humble release with a tokenization platform, but what I think would be great is if anything that I, resonated, that I talked about resonated with you guys here, and we'll have some quick Q&A. We have a booth out there. Meet the people behind this. You can meet on our engineering side. We have a VP engineer here. You can talk technology. We have the guys that run our BD team over here, our marketing team that did this amazing design work and put together this incredible event. And events, by the way, tonight, guys, uh, we have a Horizon Happy Hour. Uh, I think this is something that we would love, if you're coming to the event, we'd love to talk to you further or just stop by the booth. In the meantime, we can, I'll, I'll stop talking here. We can Q&A it and see if anyone has any questions on anything that we talked about from the interoperability protocol to the minting platform to the EVM integration to our big vision of provable virtual machines. There's a lot to unpack and it's a pretty fun uh, project with an awesome community. And I love seeing some of the community members in the audience today who have been with us from the Zencash days. Those of you who have been with us from Zencash, extra you know, thank you to you guys, but uh, really thank you to everyone who's taken the time to listen to me today. I'll stop here, any Q&A, please. Uh, I know we have a, a roving mic in case anyone does have a question. Otherwise, stop by the booth. I'm happy to talk to you there. <laughs> Not done yet, we have a question, guys. <laughs> Oh, where? I'm sorry. Where we can cloud it? TPT? Oh, I'm sorry. What was the question? Uh, where we can download the PPT? You just. Uh, speak. Oh yeah. Okay. So number one, go to horizon.io. That's a one-stop shop for everything, including finding token mint, the Cobalt wallet, and be able to run through and mint your own token. Horizon.io. And importantly, if you like this stuff, guys, join our Discord. You know, hang out in our community members. I'm there every day. You'll talk to our team. Our community, our team members are there. Uh, that's the one-stop shop for everything is our website. Then on our Discord, you can ask anything. We have another question. Uh, roving Mike, or we have questions multiple. Oh, okay, here we go. How many active developers do you guys have on platform? And maybe just a simplified example of how this compares to Starkware or some of the other um, up-and-coming ZK projects. Yeah. So. In total, we have something like 100 team members, and I would say maybe 75% of those are on the technology side. Uh, now, if we peel back the technology layer, you've got DevOps, Infra. Under that, you've got you know, our, our blockchain engineering, our product engineering, our tools teams. At the very core of all this stuff, and partic to your question, we have five cryptographers and maybe another 10 cryptographic, so like 10, 10 to 15 people total on the crypto team in there, which I can say is good. You know, but not enough. So we're trying to probably quadruple the size of that. Uh, so if you guys are in the ZK space, we want to talk to you, definitely. So whether that's uh, partnership, acquisitions, whatever, we, we really want to expand hard. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the insights. I was wondering, where, is the, where are the limitations for um, 1,000 um, blogs? Yeah. for one chain and 1,000 chains that can be run in parallel. Where is that coming from? Right, yeah, so, so the real limitation is on the main chain. So there's, there's a field for certificates on there and based on the certificate size. So that rough example was based on the certificate size for that Ouroboros Prowse based blockchain proof of stake that we're launching. So Ouroboros Prowse consensus really that Cardano is using. We, we share a research team at IOHK with Cardano. 
Um, so that's why we came up with our first iteration is Ouroboros crowd space. The field size is what limits it, but really it's consensus agnostic, the interoperability protocol. You can launch a DAG as a side chain. You can launch any type of contract. It doesn't even have to be a blockchain. You could have a black box compute. It's a certificate size that actually flows to the main chain that is the, the limit limiter. So. You guys ready to go mint some tokens? <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys taking the time here.